This is a sicha from the Kutus Sichas, Chelek Yotes, Parshas Kiseitze, Sicha Beis. And the topic of the sicha is that in this week's parsha we learn about the mitzvah of making a maike. And there are four parts in the sicha. The Rebbe will ask two questions on the Pasuk that teaches about this mitzvah. Number two, explain that it can only be understood in Pnimi Satera. Number three, answer the question and elaborate on the answer, all in Pnimi Satera. And finally, number four, present the Haira. Regarding the mitzvah of Micah, so the Pasuk says, Kisivne bayis chadosh, when you build a new house, so v'asisa Micah l'gagecha, you should make a Micah, make a fence for your roof. And the question over here is, why does it say bayis chadosh? The din is that the chiv to build a Micah is not just when a person builds a new home, but rather also when a person buys a house which was already built in the past. A person bought a house from someone who didn't have a Micah, person has to build a mica. Now the Safri answers that Mishas Chadoshosoi or Mishas Chidushoi Aseile Maike, meaning that the Chiyuf to make a mica is not like the Chiyuf to put a mezuzah, which is only upon entering the house, but rather it's immediately when the building is complete. So that's why it says, Bayis Chadosh to tell us that it's right at the Chidush of the house, not upon entering the house. Right at the Chidush of the house that it's obligated it becomes chayev in having a micah. However, the lashon of the Pasuk is still not glatik, since the chiddush of the Sifri is that the chiyuv of micah comes into effect immediately when a person becomes the owner of the house, then why does the Torah hint to this by saying sivne bayis chadosh, which implies that the chiyuv of micah is only by a new house? And the Torah doesn't do this, rather, through some other lashon, which emphasizes that the chiyuv comes into effect on every house, not just a new house, on every house, immediately when a person becomes the owner of the house. So it's still not fully glottic, because the Torah is using a terminology, a lashon, which implies only a new house. If the Torah wants to tell us that it's right when the person gets ownership of the house, it should have found the lashon that teaches that without using bias chadash, which implies something entirely different, which is not true, that it's only by a new house. The Pasuk then continues and says, And also over here, there's a difficulty, which is, why does the Pasuk refer to the person as a neifel? It says, It didn't say ha'ish. It says, Why does it refer to this person as a neifel? Now the Gemara answers that, This person actually deserves to fall from, And that's why he's called a neifel. It's just that Hashem arranges that good things happen through a person who deserves it, and bad things happen through a person who deserves that that should happen through him. However, Rashi also presents this answer, that the person is called a neifel because Roy is a lipel, and this answer is lecher and not galatik in Pshutl Shemikro, because neifel means not Roy is a lipel, but rather it's a Loshan Hoive Veshem Hatayr. It's saying Neifel, one who is falling. And it's descriptive. He is a Neifel. That the person is an actual Neifel. So the question is, why does the Terry use this word Neifel? Why do we refer to this person as a Neifel? So we'll understand this and answer these questions by first explaining a certain idea. And this is going to lead into answering the questions. It says in Pirkei Rabbi Lezer that the reason Hashem created the world in such a way that the Ruach Tzvenis, the northern side, isn't encircled, like the Maimur Rizal that says, whatever this may mean in Gashmis or in Ruchnis. So the reason it's created in such a way is in order that if someone were to come and say that that he is a God, so they will respond to him. If that's the case, then let him complete this area that Hashem left incomplete, meaning to say that in order that people shouldn't make a mistake and think that they don't need Hashem, meaning that they don't need what's higher and above them. So Hashem created them in such a way that they are missing something which they can't complete on their own. And so they therefore feel that they need a higher power. They need an Eibishter. And the same is true regarding Seichel. In order that a person who is a Baal Seichel shouldn't convince themselves that they can understand everything, so Hashem created 
the whole world of Seichel in such a way that a person is compelled to rely on things that are above Seichel. For example, in order to understand a certain idea, whatever it may be, a person must first grasp and accept the axioms of that idea, which these axioms, they don't have to necessarily be true. So the whole Seichel is built on certain axioms that themselves are just being accepted regardless of whether they could be they could be proven in Seichel. Meaning, what the saying is, that Seichel itself recognizes that it's lacking and that it must rely on things that are above Seichel. And similarly, this is also true, Lahavdil by Teira. Nigla the Teira, the revealed part of Teira, comes down to this world and comes all the way into Seichel Anushi and even to the Seichel of a guy, of a non-Jew. And therefore, in order that we should, that we should remember that Teira, even Nigla the Teira, is Seichel Aliki, the real Mohus, the real substance over here, is Seichel Aliki. It's just that it came into Seichel Anushi. So in order that we should remember and recognize this, so Hashem established certain matters of Nigla the Teira in such a way that they can't be fully understood, except if we learn them in the way that they are explained in Panimius Teira, which Panimius Teira is Seichel Aliki in a revealed way. And this leads a person to see that Teira only enclosed itself in Seichel Anushi, but in its, in its essence, its mohus, what it really is, it's Seichel Aliki, which is above all of creation. It's above the whole of creation. And we can say that the mitzvah of Micah is such an example. According to the beer pnimi of the mitzvah of Micah, it'll be understood that a bias chadosh, specifically chadosh, is an integral part in the inner idea of the mitzvah of Micah. And similarly, it'll be understood why it says yipoil hanayfel, since the person is already a nayfel even before falling, when we understand the mitzvah of Micah according to its beer pnimi. So now we're going to explain the mitzvah of Micah according to Primi Sinyanim, and we'll see how according to the explanation in Primi Sinyanim, both of our questions are answered. So Chazal say, Beisai zu ishte, to the extent that Rabbi Yesi said, Miyamai le karisi le ishti ishti, ele le ishti beisi, because Rabbi Yesi was able to see the Primius, that his wife is the true Akaris Abayas, the true foundation of the home. And this is the beer Primi of Kisivne Bayis Chadosh. It's the time of starting married life, Chaim Nesuyim, when a person takes on earning parnasa. So, Kisivne Bayis Chadosh refers to Chaim Nesuyim to marriage. And the Torah teaches us that Kisivne Bayis Chadosh Vaasisa Maika. The Torah is telling us that since this is a Bayis Chadosh, meaning it's a new Seder in Avoida, which a person isn't accustomed to, so that's why it's called Kisivne Bayis Chadosh. It's a new Seder in Avoida. One that a person is not accustomed to. So the Torah says, therefore, a person must make a mica, a person has to make a fence, something to protect themselves. The previous various zahiris that a person had aren't enough, but rather a person must accept new forms of zahiris in machshava, dibber, and maisa, in thought, speech, and action. And the reason why specifically this new Aveda requires the zahiris of a mica is as the Pasa continues and says, ki yipel hanefel mimenu. Since this Aveda is one in the direction of a Yerida and Nefila compared to a person's previous states, and, and this is since being occupied with Gashmis, which a person starts from getting married, is similar to the Neshama coming into the world, just like the Neshama is entirely Ruchni and is coming into the world, a place of Gashmis, so too when a person gets married, they're coming from a place where they're removed from the Gashmis of the world, and now they're coming and being occupied with the Gashmis of the world. So since this is a Yerida and Nefila, this person's a Neifel, so therefore it's possible that the Gashmis of the world will cause a person to fall from their level. And if a person isn't extra careful while building this bias Chadash, this new Aveda of bias of marriage, so not only won't they be able to elevate the Gashmis, which is the whole purpose, they not only won't be able to elevate the Gashmis and make it into Ruchnis, but to the contrary, the Gashmis will intensify the Yerida and Nefila. It will cause that Yipayel Hanayfel. And so now we understand why it says Kisivna Bayis Chodosh. This is referring to Chaim Nesuyim to getting married, which is in the Indian Chodosh. It's something entirely new for the person. And as a result, the Torah says, Vasisa, Mike, you have to make a fence. You have to protect yourself. And what's the reason? Why by this new way did they have to do this? Because Kiyipel Hanayfel. This person is in a direction of Nefila. The person is going into the world, engaging with the Gashmis, becoming occupied with the Gashmis. And the goal of that is in order to elevate it. But if a person doesn't make the proper fences, then not only won't they elevate the Gashmis, but Rahman al Slan will be Kiyi Pail Hanayfel. The one that's going in a downward direction, that's going in a direction that could be considered a fall, will fall, meaning that the Gashmis will affect them instead of them elevating and making the Gashmis into Ruchnias.
Now we're going to move on to explain the mitzvah of Micah in another way in Pnimi Seinonim, and as we'll see, it'll also lead, lead us to a deeper understanding of this mitzvah. So bias sometimes also refers to the body of a person. So not just to marriage, but to the body of a person. And in Avedas Hashem, this encompasses the general Aveda of Birurim, to Mimavar, the Guf, and Chalka Ba'ilam. So you have the Neshama, the Neshama comes into a body, into a certain place in the world, and there's the Avedas Birurim, which is that the Neshama has to Mimavar, the Guf, the body that it enters, and the part of the world that it's in. And this Aveda is called a Bayis Chodosh. Why is it called a Chodosh? For two reasons. Number one, because before the Neshama enters the world, it has no concept in all of this. The whole idea of a guf, of a body, and the world, the physical world, is completely Chodosh. It's completely new to the Neshama. And number two, because through this Aveda, the truest Chodosh is achieved. And so that's why it's called a bias Chodosh. The bias is talking about the Neshama entering the bias, the guf. Why is it called Chodosh? Because this is something entirely new to the Neshama, because... The Neshama has no concept in any of these things before it enters the world. And number two, because through it the truest Chiddush is achieved. Now when we say the truest Chiddush, that means there's various levels of Chiddush. So this is similar to what it says about the creation of the world. That even though there are a number of levels in Seder Shtashlos that are created in a way of Ischachos from their Sherish and Mokr, from their source, like the Klolos Ha'ur Shalachir HaTzimtzum is an Indian of Ischachos. It's an Ur that wasn't around before the Tzimtzum. And Ak is called Adam the Bria. Bria means Ischachos, a creation. The Kedem of Atzilus are an Indian of Yashma'ayin. And certainly Elam Abriya is an Indian of Ischachos. But nevertheless, the true Indian of Chiddush is specifically the Havas of Elam Haza Gashmi. And as the famous saying, that this Havas of Gashmi is from Ruchnius, is Ein Lecha Yesh Ma'ayin G'daylo Mizah. And similarly, it's also true by the Avedah with Gashmi Yisdika Matters. That since Gashmi has no comparison, it has no Erech to Ruchnius, so it comes out that the Avedah to be Mavar the Gashmi of the world and transform it into Ruchnius is an Indian of Eschachos, and it's the true, truest Indian of Eschachos. And so that's why it's called a Bayez Chodosh, because through this Aveda, tr- the truest of Chidushim is achieved, which is to make from Gashmi Yisruchnius. And therefore, this manner of Aveda is hinted to in the words, Ki Sivna Bayez Chodosh. This is the Aveda to make a Chidush in the Bayez, the body, and through that, to make a Bayez and Dira in this world, for Hashem. And so that's another explanation of Kisivna Bayes Chadosh. It's referring to the whole Avedis Sabirurim. And the reason it's called Chadosh is both because this is something entirely new to the Neshama and also because through it the truest Chadosh is achieved that one makes from Gashmius Ruchnius. Continuing with this idea, so just like the Aveda of Avedis Sabirurim is in the form of Eschachos, so the same is true regarding the person doing the Aveda. The Iloi that is achieved by the person through other forms of Aveda is a relative Iloi. The person was holding on one level, and their Oila to a higher level, which is relative to the previous level. However, through the Aveda to Mimavar, the Gashmius of the world, which is an Aveda of a true Chiddush to make from Gashmius, Ruchnius, so the person grows in a way of a Chiddush, it's completely Bein Areich. And furthermore, this Aveda also achieves a Chiddush above by Hashem. As a result, say that a Kerl B'day Shemaim, Chutz Meir Shemaim, and Meisifen Koyach B'Gvura Shomailo. So a person adds to something that's not B'day Shemaim. Through the Aveda of Dir Le Yizberch B'Tachtenim, it becomes the Dir No, which Chazal tell us that a Dir No is Marchivin Daito Shal Adam. And this means the Marchivin Daito Shal Adam of the Adam El Yin. So we're Meisif in Mamaila. Because Mitzah, the way it is in Seder Shtal Shlush, so there's Kaviyach al oh, There's Agbala above regarding the Amshachas early key in the world. There's an early key which can be Nimshach in the world. And there's an early key which is higher than the world. And then there is an even higher early key which is not within the whole gather of the world at all. So that would be Mamali Kalamin is Nimshach in the world. Seviv of Kalamin is above the world, but it still has a connection to the world. It's called Seviv of Kalamin. And then there's an earth that has no connection to the world whatsoever. And this is all Mitzad Seder Shtashlus. And through the Aveda Vayid, it creates a Harchova and a Chiddush that also the Ur Laki, which is not within the whole gather of the world at all, including the Ur, which is higher than the Ur, which was Mamali Makam before the Tzimtzum. So through the Aveda Vayid of making a dear Lay's Berch so a person is Mamshech, those highest of levels, down here into Ilam Haza Gashmi. Now the Kli to an Indian of Chiddush is Bittl, 
as it's known when it comes to aliyahs, so when the aliyah is be'en ayreich to the previous level, so there needs to be bitl before the aliyah. If the levels are relative to one another, so then the previous level, the first level, leads to the next level. However, if the levels are infinitely distant from one another, so the previous level is going to get in the way of the next level. It's infinitely removed from it. So there has to be bitl before the aliyah. And this is similar to the amud and nor her dinner that one has to go through when going from Gan Eden Atachtin to Gan Eden Elyon because Gan Eden Atachtin is infinitely removed from Gan Eden Elyon. And this is the inner meaning of Micah. A Yid's Bittal is expressed in the Gdarim and the Syogim, the Micah that a Yid establishes in their Aveda, which makes the purpose a proper kli for a bias Chadash. So now we have an entirely different understanding of Kisivin a bias Chadash and Vasisa Michael Gagecha. Instead of looking at it as a person going into a place of a Yirida, going down, and a person has to protect themselves. So there is more of a negative framing to it. We could see it as Kisivna Bayis Chodesh. We're talking about an Aveda of Chidush, a true Chidush, both in the world in, and in the person and in, in the Ebershtuk of Yachal. So it's a very elevated and high level. And the mic is an expression of the Bittal that allows for this infinite Chidush to occur. And according to this, we can also explain the inner reason why, according to Allah, the end of the Pasuk, where it says, V'loi sasen dami v'secha, so, according to Allah, it's not just a reason for the mitzvah of Micah, but it's rather also a mitzvah for itself, as it says in Sifri, that Vasisa Michael Gagecha is a mitzvah sase, and Leisasim Dam Beisecha is a mitzvah Leisase. How come we're separating them? Why don't we just say that Leisasim Dam Beisecha, the conclusion of the Pasik, is the reason? Why? Kisivna Bayes Chadosh Vasisa Michael Gagecha. So that, but according to this, we can understand why it's two separate things. Because this is because the Indian of Micah is not just a gather and siog to stop the person from falling. According to what we explained it now, it's not just that a person shouldn't fall, but rather this is a positive thing. The Micah is the kli to achieving this Aveda. But rather it's a necessary Indian in order to build the bias Chadash. The Chiddush and Ili, which is Be'ein Arech and the person, and also Kaviyachal above. So the, the point over here is, that if the mic was just a technical thing to lead to Laisasam Dam Besecha, then it should, we should say Laisasam Dam Besecha is a reason for the mic. But now that we're explaining that the mic is a whole Indian for itself, it's an expression and it is the Yitz Bittal, so that's a thing for itself. Doesn't, you don't need an additional thing. You need a mic because that is the Indian of Bittal, so that's something for itself. And then Laisasam Dam Besecha is a separate thing. So according to this, we have a whole and much deeper understanding in this whole mitzvah of Kisiv Nebayas Chadash, Vasisa Michael Gagecha, and ki yipal hanefil mimenu. So the ira from all of this is, a person must know that one cannot close themselves off from the world, but rather one must build a bias. One must make a direr lo yizbarach b'tachtainim. And to the contrary, through the yurida, in this type of aveda, we come to the truest aliyah, it accomplishes a chiddush down here and above. On the other hand, one must know that in order to make a kli from Gashmius for Ruchnius, so one must make a maika. If you want to make Gashmius into Ruchnius, you must make a maika. This means that one remains removed from the Gashmius of the world. A person indeed occupies themselves with worldly matters because now they're starting a bias chadash and avoid in the world. However, they are of no significance to the person. The Gashmias, the worldly matters, are of no significance to the person, and therefore one remains removed from them. The reason why they're of no significance is because one knows and feels that their entire involvement with worldly matters is only in order to fulfill the kavana, to make a dir loy yizbarach b'tachtenim. So a person has to know not to stay removed from the world, but to go into the world and to realize that actually it's not just that they're doing it because Hashem wants, but that's how they achieve and accomplish the truest aliyah. And at the same time, once a person is ready to go into the world, they have to remember that in order to make from Gashmias, in order to make from Gashmias, Ruchnias, a person has to build a mica, a person has to, on the inside, be completely removed from the Gashmias and know and feel that their only involvement in the Gashmias is because that's what the Yibishta wants, but they on their own are removed from it. It's not something which holds any significance and importance to the person. Now we have a special hero from all of this for those who are getting ready to build a bias chadosh in the sense of marriage. We see from this the greatness of marriage. The marriage of every year is not just an Indian kloli for the person themselves, but also kviyachol for lamayla. 
because that's the time that the main avoid of making a dira lo yizbarach betachtenim begins, and therefore it's marchiven daita shal adam this dira of the eibushter, which means that it draws down a hamshachas er chadash. On the other hand, the person has to know that the way to build a bias chadash is by building a maika, by taking on gedarim v'siyagim fences to protect the person from the gashmis of the world. L'cha'ero, since it says by Achosan that Meichel Le'al Kol you can ask this. So it's not so necessary to be concerned with the Gedarim V'syogim. So therefore a person is told that to the contrary, not only for the future does one need to be concerned because of not being familiar with the Aved and the world, so it can cause that Yipal HaNeifel, like we said, it's something entirely new to the person. But even more so, one must build a Micah for the not good things from the past as well, not just because of the future. Because since a person has to grow in a Ilui, which is Be'in HaReich, so therefore the previous tshuva isn't enough. This meichel and akal v'neisov is not enough, and one must have a higher tshuva which befits the ilui of the bais chadosh. So I have to be a mike, and not just because a person is entering a new aveda, but because it's a type of aveda which is not just new technically chadosh, but it's an inyan of chiddush. It's bein areich, and for that, the meichel and akal v'neisov of the past is no longer enough because it's an infinitely higher level. So there's a new type of tshuva that's needed. And this is also true regarding the idea of a mica that was earlier explained, which means being removed from worldly matters. One can claim that since they are now starting al pitera, the time of being occupied with worldly matters, so how can we demand by them to remain removed from worldly matters? So it's not just the union of Gdarm and Syagim. When we're talking about a mica, it means to be removed from worldly matters. A person could claim against it. What do you mean? This is the time of being involved with worldly matters. So one must know that to the contrary, the purpose of marriage of a man and woman, Lamata, is that Zahu Shchina Shruya Benayim. It should bring to the bias Chadash the marriage and Ruchnius between Yidin and Hashem. And there are two Inyanim in this. Number one is the marriage between Yidin and Hashem, that Yidin become united with Eloquos. And number two, that through this, it says marriage brings about one that the woman is married to the man, and also that also la kula alma kehektish, she comes forbidden to the whole world like hektish is forbidden to the whole world. Meaning over here that a person, the yid, the kala becomes kadush and moved from worldly matters. Because as we said, the person's entire involvement in worldly matters is only to make a dira la yizbarich betachtainim.